Do you have no room for a water pump in your swapped vehicle? Are you tired of your water pump dragging everything else down with all of its rotational bubbly jubbly? Do you have the ability to add another circuit fairly easily in your current setup? Do you like the Russian power of a Davies Craig electrical water pump <laughs> all up in your grill? Well, you're in luck. Today we're talking about electric water pumps, specifically for LS applications. Play the intro! This is probably the third or the fourth, maybe the fifth time I've made this almost exact video, but I can't hammer home enough the value in choosing to use quality parts um, instead of thinking you're piecing together a cheap alternative. And that's the point of this video, is how do you effectively put an electric water pump on your LS setup and uh, not only not break the bank, but have a setup that's clean, tried and true, and proven. And that's what I'm here to tell you, show you, explain to you, illustrate for you. That's why I'm here, I guess. Now, there are two different methodologies of doing this. The first of which is to use water pump adapters. They bolt onto your stock water pump location. Each side has two 12A and fittings that are outlets. Uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna show you a picture of what they look like. This isn't bad, but there's other options that in the long run will be cheaper for you. So as you can see from that picture, those each bolt on with three bolts to either side of the water where the factory water pump bolts up. Now those are threaded for normally a 12AN orb fitting. So you have to run dual 12AN inlet, dual 12AN outlet, and then Ys and merges and ups and downs. And it's a lot, a lot. It's a ton of fittings and a ton of hose. Ask me how I know, because I did it on my supercharged setup and it was a painstaking process to say the least. So I wanted a healthier solution and a more cost effective solution. Now bear in mind, I've done the math in a previous, bear in mind, I have done the math in a previous video. I, uh, now that we're moving stuff to YouTube, we realized the titles to a lot of our videos were probably a little misleading. This thing is buried in an FD build video. But trust me, I've done the math, I've done the research, and I will tell you that Using the adapter fittings I just showed you, all of the extra fittings you need, the Ys, all the line, comes out to around $660 in total fittings, line, and adapters. That's just for fittings, lines, and adapters. What? And if you don't believe me, fact check me. Go ahead. I want you to look up 12 AN fittings that you'll need. I want you to look up the initial adapter fittings plus the orb fittings for the adapters, the two Ys you'll need, the 12 AN hose you'll need, the 16 AN feed and return you'll need, add all that stuff up. And I'm not talking about your eBay fittings, I'm talking about your brand name fittings, your Red Horses, your Fragolas. Did you get it? Cool, so you know how expensive it is. So $657 and change, it's called 660 for argument's sake. That's what it came out to, to do it that route. The other route requires a little bit more of an upfront investment, but it saves you money in the long run. Less of my face, more of me showing you. Don't pay attention to the red ground wires. They're only there temporarily. But we have a 417 Motorsports water manifold kit. It has a 16AN on either side, as you can see. 16AN, 16AN. And it also has ports on top. I plug one and then I use another one for coolant pressure. You can see right there, it's coolant pressure. So I know if I'm lifting a head. The 417 piece in natural, non-coated, non-anodized is 315 bucks. You can get it from Lil John Motorsport Solutions. Shout out John Bewley. They have them in stock. They can ship same day if you order before, I think two o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. Anyway, um, I just showed you, there's four ports, main ports total. I'm explain that a little bit more right now. LS cooling systems, your main water, your stock water pump. You're pumping fluid in the bottom ports and then it rises through the engine and it returns out the top port. So 
you see on the bottom, I have the feed going in to the bottom of the 417 Motorsports plate. That feeds the two lower holes that are on the engine. There's a divider between the two lower and upper inside that piece. Once it circulates into the engine, out the cylinder heads, it comes out the top two holes behind this and it recirculates back out and down to the pump. But you have to block off one lower and one upper. If you can see it, you have to block off an upper and a lower and only run one of each to be on the money. Again, do not judge anything you just saw. Kind of a thrash to get the car to the track. So a Davies Craig pump. Unfortunately, mine is buried underneath the butt end of my car. So I'm gonna do my best to illustrate how that thing is plumbed. So recap, fluid enters from the pump, the pressure side of the pump, shoots into the bottom ports of the engine, circulates to the top of the cylinder head, out the top port, and returns back to the radiator. I have an inline fill right here, and that drains down to the radiator that's in the back of the car. Now, if you walk around here, got the car in the air, you can see, there's my radiator. All right, it's gonna be kind of hard to see. My flashlight's broken on my phone. But there is the outlet side of the pump. The inlet side's right there. So a 16 AN feed comes into this turbo looking thing, shoots out here into my radiator, goes through my radiator, out the outlet of my radiator, and back to the front of the car. Whew. Getting fat, dude, sucks. I've said this again in past videos. The Davies Craig pump, it's also available to buy from Little John Motorsports. The Davies Craig pump is sold with or without a pump controller to control the speed of the pump. I personally run mine on full kill. Once the car gets to about 135 degrees, I trigger it on and it stays on for the duration. Um, on the dyno, the car didn't get above 185, 190 degrees, which is awesome. Um, but it's a very, very unique, easy to run and easy to manage setup for sure. Here's the other kicker to this. I said earlier, 660 bucks to do the fitting style I showed you originally. Well, then you see, well, it's 315 bucks just for the water manifold, Logan. Ah, freaking out. Ah. I get that. Yeah, that's a huge initial investment. However, the exact same amount of fittings that you need to make that setup work is cut in half with the water manifold. Just plumbing the front, you're looking at $436.94. That was my last price check. $440, bucks, let us call it, just to be fair to the $660 on the other setup. So $660 bucks to do the cheaper initial water outlet fittings or 440 bucks to do the nice, clean, presentable front plate, front water manifold from 417 slash LJMS. So you're looking at a couple hundred dollars in savings when it comes to the initial investment of the 417 piece. There is an extremely important note that I want everyone to be aware of because I get a lot of BS talkers in the comments. 417 Motorsports did not give me that water manifold. I paid retail price for that manifold. Blake, the owner of 417, great dude. You pay people for what they're worth. So no, they didn't send me this manifold and I'm, man, I don't know how to say this without cussing. I was not given these parts to just push them on you. I'm only bringing you this information because I myself wasted a ton of time and a ton of money and a ton of fittings and a ton of aggravation when I could have just done this from the beginning, which I would have done had I known about it. And because I'm an artiste, I'm gonna show you on paper how to plumb one of these systems. All right, so that's your, that's your 417 manifold, right? This is the front of the engine. Front, yay! Uh, this is how I plumbed mine. First of all, I blocked this off, so a 16 AN plug. Remember, the inside of this manifold is divided in half. So you take the front plate off, it's divided in half. 
The Davies Craig water pump, okay? I push this thing out to the radiator, and then it goes through the radiator, and it goes into the lower port. I'm sorry about the sound effects. The lower port of the 417. I block this one off so the coolant runs through the bottom of the engine, up to the top, out the head, and it circulates back into the inlet side of the Davies Craig pump. That's honestly, I am an artist. There are some tricks with mounting the pump that I learned the hard way from Travis Ball, Ball Metal Fab, shout out Trav, uh, and also Blake Hughes at 417. Mounting the pump with the outlet facing up so you don't airlock it, among some other things when you bleed the system, it's important. But that is the basic gist of an electric water pump on an LS application. You can buy the Davies Craig pump controller and you can control speed like that, or you can do what I do with my standalone Holly EFI. I just trigger it with my ECU. So that's your quick 10 minute spiel on electric water pumps. Remember, this is not and will not be a paid advertisement for anybody. It's just me telling you how I saved some cash and some heartache, and I want you to be able to do the same. Peace and chicken grease, I'm out.